the district. Uh, I really appreciate everything you said, and I'm going to ask a question that I, I sort of expect a certain answer from you, but I'd rather you say it than I do. Uh, what would you have us, well, a lot of people in this room were political science, uh, economics majors. Is that a good idea? Or would, do you think there's something better we could be doing? But there's nothing wrong with what you're going after. But this is another thing also that the kids on the left have figured out that you guys need to get out of these comfort zones. I see kids on the left who everything that they've done before is in finance. And today they have created a, a chip company, uh, a, chips, a, a chips company, and uh, using, uh, or maybe a salsa company, um, you know, featuring special salsa from India from their trip in India. And you will see, as you start traveling, guys, you will bring back these ideas that are gonna be behind the companies you're gonna build. That's, these are some of, so don't think that what you studied stops you. You guys all talk about freedom, but you, are you really practicing freedom when you're telling me, well, this is what I studied, so I gotta stay within that, and within that, what can I do? You are free. Do it. Can I make a good comment adding to that? I, my father always told me something that I think Charles Dickens said. He said, never let education uh, limit, no, let, never let schooling limit your education. And uh, I, I do think that as, you know, people who want to change the world and, and, you know, bring people out of poverty through free markets and things like that, we ought to be studying the means of production. We ought to be people that know how to build things and how to build business. But you don't learn that in school. You learn that on the Exactly, ground. yes. Yeah, you, learn, you don't need to learn in school. That's why I have this Thank yeah. you very much. Hi, my name is Barbara Sostaita. I'm a campus coordinator for Students for Liberty. First and foremost, I want to thank you for your message and for coming to speak with us and sharing your ideas. As an immigrant woman from Argentina, I, your message of lifting people out of poverty and the search for freedom resonates with me very deeply. And I'm studying international relations and I'm hoping to go into development. And I'm very interested in the topics that you've presented. And I'm interested also in making a tangible outcome from these ideas, as you've suggested. How would you, what would be your advice for someone like me who's hoping to go into this type of work as a college student? Mm -hmm. Again, guys, at some point, the pool is there. You see, I knew I was gonna get questions like this, and by the way, I'm not trying to discourage these questions, but at the end of the day, it's, um, you gotta find out where things are happening. And like I said, you may not have been in touch with it before, but we can put you in touch with those. And at some point, it's just about jumping in the pool. The very next thing that I would love for you to do, if for those of you who can't make it abroad, then start talking to kids from abroad and start making connections that way. You know, I heard about the story of a man from Afghanistan today. And um, the stuff that he's talking about, uh, it's funny because Andrew introduced him to me. Andrew may never get a chance to go to Afghanistan for whatever reason, but Andrew, if he keeps on talking to this young man, and I cannot say his name, if he keeps talking to him, Andrew is about to, at so far, Andrew is more educated on Afghanistan than I am. Why? Because he is having mid, uh, late night conversations with this gentleman who has lived there, is from there, and they're sharing experiences and stories. So these are other ways for you to really know what's going on. And eventually Actually, um, if let's say you cannot go back to Argentina for whatever reason or you don't want to go, then partner with somebody on the ground in Argentina, do something together, build something. It's, all I'm trying to say is that the possibilities are endless, and I don't even want to sit here and give you one, exa uh, one example because I'm afraid that even that may confine it too much for you. All it is, it's open yourselves up. Let the heart speak. You have to learn something new, which is to let your heart speak. You have developed your brain so much, the muscle is so big, and you have, now, you have lost the power of speaking with your heart. And when you start speaking with your heart, then sit and observe the magic and the wonders around you. Hello, I'm Sean David Heisinger II, and I am forming a Yale chapter at Rosemont College, as well as the Right We Already Have movement. Uh, uh, since, uh, since the movement uh, has some basis on the law, as per my current involvement therein at this time, I really appreciate your comment about how our laws are fucked up, and I'm actually in the middle of doing something about it. Uh, my, uh, my interest in law in this regard, with respect to my lifelong interest in freedom, that I should say has become more, a little more specific, uh, as early as high school as well. I find a lot of what you say to be common sense. And, and 
with that in mind, uh, would you uh, would you agree with me on the notion that what you've been saying and I've been thinking, regardless of how much I've actually spoken of it on my own, is something long overdue? Oh, I, I think it is. I. And by the way, you're interested in laws? You're interested in laws? I don't want you to think that what we know of law is the only law possible. Talk to my husband, Michael Strong, afterwards about his free cities, which is all about bootstrapping new uh, entrepreneurial law, basically. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. And um, actually, uh, part of my work in law, which I try to keep from consuming my life entirely, or during this time, or this part of my life at the very least, uh, I'm trying to restore the rights we already have, hence the rights we already have movement. And, I've, and I believe my awareness of these rights we already have, yes. at least here in the United States, maybe, uh, uh, and I would think around the world as well because of natural law, I've been aware of as early as high school. Thanks, uh, for, thanks for the comments. And by the way, the United States is a bit too spoiled for you guys. We're starting to take freedom for granted in this country. And if they can't see it here, remember, again, the world is your oyster. And you will, if you focus maybe on the outside, you will be able to build something on the outside, and then the United States will look back at it and be like, wait a second, we want that! And then maybe it's a way back in for you. So it's never too late, take detours, whatever it is, get it done. Hi, I'd just like to say, uh, I definitely agree with your, uh, your comments about creating a libertarian culture. But, you know, I think it's overlooked that, you know, in some sense, we already have done that. We've done that very substantially in the area well, of... Uh, well, yeah, but we've done it very substantially in the area of the Internet. Because, you know, basically, libertarians own the Internet. Whoa. And, you know, I was a little bit... Okay. I was a little bit offended by the, uh, one of the keynote speakers the first time around. Because I just like to say loud and proud that I am a proud internet troll for Ron Paul. <laughs> All right, I, I love that. I think that we, the internet but, is a uh, very... We, we tried because there's so many okay. people behind you. I love what you're saying, but quick question, what is it? Okay, um, do you think that the internet is a, an important avenue for... The internet a is a tool, function? use it. That's what I think. That's what everybody does. Yeah, um, I agree with everything you said about going abroad, and I think a lot of people here want to do that. I was having a conversation with a young woman from Zimbabwe before. We were both talking about, at the same time, yes, the, the left does have this moral high ground. But it, it also, I just wonder, you know, it can be kind of patronizing at the same time, too. It's like the, their foreign aid arguments. And I'm wondering what you think about charity, what... You know, specifically, Don't more specifically, started, what should we get? I'm done with okay. my keynote. I'm not supposed to talk okay. more about this, but I know where you're going, so let me answer real quick. Okay. Um, the left is patronizing the way they're going at it because it's all about aid in their, thi in their thinking, right? right? The way you guys would go about it, because I know what your ideas stand for. It's everything but patronizing. It's everything but charity. We're just saying the, 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 my, my, um, Operating system is broken. You see? That's all we have in our countries. Our operating system is broken. That's all. So, and that's all you're saying. They're saying more than that. They're saying the Africans are fucked up. That's different. Right. And therefore, we're going to go help them because they're poor, hopeless little things. That's not what you would be saying. No, I don't want to say that. That's what I'm saying. So please, that's what we want. My, my Nigerian friends over here, isn't it what we want? It's not patronizing. This would be like, yeah, man, you understand what the problem is. Finally, you're not an idiot like uh, you know, some of the places. Well, let's do it. So no, it's not patronizing. And please don't let yourself be, be stopped by that. That's the problem that the left has right now. And that's why I'm saying you will have, you will have the moral high ground. Because you will be the ones perceived, because you truly are, the people looking at us eye to eye. It's that simple. Thanks.